Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Today I've got a follow-up video to uh, one of my last videos where I showed you guys my two-wheel drive e-bike here out on the beach. Uh, and today I've got another question and answer video. This question comes from Stanley Zarella, Zaria. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. But basically he's asking about the battery. You know, how do you choose a battery for a bike like this? Or um, I'll expand a little bit. How do you choose a battery for any e-bike? You know, how do you make sure you get the right battery? So that's today's question, and I'll start by showing you guys the battery I made for this bike. Now, I'm not going to go through all the steps of making the battery. Uh, you know, I've got a few more videos on my channel where you can see all the, the how-to steps for building your own lithium battery. Uh, I'll put a link to it uh, up here somewhere. Can't see the frame, but it'll be up there. Um, but uh, basically, I'll tell you about this battery first. This is a battery I built a while back out of Samsung 26F cells, which are pretty economical, you know, good quality, but cheap cells. They're 2600 milliamp hours, or 2.6 amp hours each, and they can handle about five amps each. So this battery is fairly large. Uh, this is a 20 amp hour battery. It's also 52 volts, which means it's 14S, or 14 cells in series. Uh, that makes it a 14S uh, 8P battery, I believe, yeah. Um, which make it a little bit over, uh, a little over 20 amp hours. Um, so basically, for this bike, I knew I was going to have two motors. I knew it was going to be fairly powerful. It's about 1,100 watts. So I wanted to make a battery that was going to be, um, you know, pretty high capacity, something at least 20 amp hours. I went with the Samsung 26F cells, partly because I had them, and partly because they're they're good, cheap, uh, but you know, cheap, inexpensive, but good quality cells. And so that's why I went with those. If I was building a smaller battery, like a 10 amp hour battery. Um, then those cells would not have been appropriate just because they're lower um, current capacity. You know, they can only handle 5 amps each. I have another video that talks specifically about choosing cells for a battery, so I'll put a link to that up here. Um, and you should watch that if you want to know about choosing cells, but we're going to talk about battery packs at this point. So, how do you choose the right battery pack for a bike? Now, the most important thing that you want to look at is the maximum current that that battery can handle. Um, so in my case, I knew that I've gonna, I'm going to pull about 22 amps from this bike, so I need a battery that can pull at least 22 amps. Now, you'll often see two amp ratings on batteries when you look at them online. Uh, the first one's going to be the continuous current rating, and then the next one will be the peak current rating. Now, the continuous, that means that this battery is meant to run at that rating, you know, all day, every day. So if it's a 20 amp continuous battery, that means you should be able to pull 20 amps from it continuously until the battery dies. No problem, no overheating. Uh, then there will be a peak amp rating. And this might be, let's say if you've got a 20 amp uh, continuous battery, it might say it's 30 amp peak. And what that means is that uh, it's okay to pull 30 amps from it, but you should really do it in bursts. You know, it can't do that continuously. If you hook it up to a 30 amp load and you just let it run continuously, eventually that battery will overheat. So, um, you know, every manufacturer has a different uh, definition of what a burst is. Some say it's, you know, a couple of seconds. Some say it's up to 10 or 15 seconds. But um, the way that I try to spec my batteries is to basically ignore the peak rating. What I do is I look at the continuous current rating and I use that as my peak rating. Um, so, for example, this battery, it's got eight uh, Samsung 26F cells. Each have a, a capacity of five amps each. So, technically, and that's a continuous rating. So technically that means 8 times 5, I could pull up to 40 amps from this. But uh, I try to um, treat that as the peak, so I would never continuously pull that amount of current. Uh, instead, I would try to make sure that whatever my continuous current is, that's basically what I treat as the peak. So if I'm looking at a more powerful e-bike, let's say I've got um, like a BBS HD mid-drive motor. So that can generally pull up to 30 amps. So when I'm specking a battery, I wouldn't look for a battery that can peak at 30 amps. I look for a battery that has a continuous rating of 30 amps. Now on that BBS HD pulling 30 amps, it's not really going to pull 30 amps all the time. It'll pull 30 amps basically when you're accelerating or when you're going up a hill. Those are the times when you're mostly in a full power situation. But just to keep things safe and have a safety factor, that's why I like to treat the um, continuous rating of a battery as its peak rating. So in that case, again, I wouldn't choose a battery that has a 30 amp peak rating, I'd choose a battery that has a 30 amp continuous rating. Um, the next thing is just making sure that you're choosing enough capacity for your bike. On this bike, you know, it's probably more than I need. I can get about uh, 60 kilometers of range, or about uh, 40 miles of range, with this 20 amp hour battery at full speed, you know, going uh, almost 50 kilometers an hour, or almost 30 miles an hour. That's more than I usually need. 
Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough that you know I don't need to charge it every day. Uh, for a while I was commuting to school and I had about uh, a 20 kilometer commute there and back every day. So I could charge it every few days. But generally you want to make sure you have enough uh, capacity in terms of amp hours. And if you're ever you know, on the fence, I always say go bigger because you're never going to say, oh man, I wish I had less battery, you know? So I always try, if I can, uh, to choose a larger size battery in terms of capacity. You know, lithium batteries are expensive, so you have to consider what's in your budget, but if you have the means, a larger amp hour battery is almost always going to be a good choice. All right, thank you, Stanley, for sending in that question. I hope that answered, um, you know, some of your questions. I hope that cleared some things up. Um, remember, like all of my Q&A videos, if you have questions, put them in the comments below my videos. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and if I make a video response about your question, then I will send you a free copy of either my first book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my most recent book, DIY Lithium Batteries, How to Build Your Own Battery Packs. So Stanley, send me a private message here on YouTube and send me your uh, mailing address and I will send you uh, either of the books that you choose. And everyone else, remember put your questions in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching everybody. One last thing, the giveaway winner for my last video is GP Bratton. Congratulations. For everyone else, if you want to win a free copy of one of my books in the next drawing, just leave a comment on this video and be subscribed to the channel. I'll announce the next giveaway winner at the end of my next video. Thanks for watching everybody.